Switching over to fats. Um, saturated fat is really something that we all should be avoiding. And um, I don't have, to, I start with saturated fat instead of trans fats because I am in New York. I will mention it because I know we have an audience uh, who is not in New York. Um, and most of you from New York know what I'm talking about. But saturated fat uh, has been in the news. It's been in the New York Times, it's been in Time Magazine. Uh, people proposing uh, uh, not avoiding it because all of the studies saying that saturated fat is bad for you are, are studies that are flawed. Well, you know, they, they make a good point that people do not generally, sometimes they do, but generally they don't go and just start eating saturated fat. They're eating foods. And, you know, if the food has cholesterol, the food has sodium, you might see health effects um, that are very dif difficult to distinguish uh, what really is the bad portion of it. But as best we can determine it, um, and uh, there is a large amount of data if you compare populations with large amount of saturated fat to those with small amount, uh, people do worse, uh, particularly with coronary heart disease. Now, um, if you compare specific dietary fats with uh, total and cost-specific mortality, again published in uh, Journal of American Medical Association, this is what you see. And I know there are plant-based nutrition people who say you shouldn't eat any fat at all. Okay, well. I can tell you that monounsaturated fat improves your cholesterol. Polyunsaturated fat improves it even more. Trans fats are, destroy your cholesterol profile and your cardiovascular risk, and saturated fat, not quite as bad, but still bad. And increasing, uh, uh, just replacing just 5% of your saturated fat with um, monounsaturated fat and polyunsaturated fat would actually reduce your uh, cardio cardiac mortality by about 27%. So worthwhile looking at. Okay, so I know I'm in New York, but I'll mention this anyway very quickly. Um, trans fats are so good. Easy to use, that taste is spent, the texture of something that's deep fried is so incredibly good. Wonderful shelf life if you're the, the uh, restaurant. Uh, so why are Denmark, Switzerland, Canada, California, New York, city, uh, uh, several counties here, why are they all banning it? Uh, re because it increases LDL cholesterol, it lowers your good cholesterol, it's associated with heart attack, stroke, diabetes. Other than that, it's just really good, okay? So it's one of the substances where you could do a before and after because uh, of New York uh, having such an interest in this and just look at the hospitalizations, look at the hospital records. And what you see is that when you have a county that decides it's not gonna do this anymore, um, you see a significant decrease in heart attack and stroke in a fairly short amount of time. And that's, you know, these are people's lives, these are people's brains. Uh, this is something that everyone should do and hopefully it'll spread from New York to the entire country. The dietary fat, uh, for those of you who are getting caught up in this, um, you know, sort of storm about, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the storm about uh, whether or not saturated fat is bad and, um, uh, and get into the arguments, you might want to arm yourself with the American Heart Association's presidential advisory that really looks carefully at um, the science behind it. And they admit when the science is weak, and particularly the one that came up in the discussion last night was coconut oil. They came out against it, and, but they were very clear that this is opinion of experts, okay, because the data isn't strong either way. But that's the only place where the data isn't strong. Um, getting away from uh, saturated fat and replacement with unsaturated fat actually does lower LDL cholesterol and lower um, uh, cardiovascular events and mortality. Let's talk about fiber. Uh, we've mentioned how it improves uh, the insulin response and it's important to have fiber when you're doing the sugar. Uh, but is there data specifically for high fiber diet? There actually is, and so these are multiple studies, and you can see that line of identity at 1.0, and every study is on the left side of it, some stronger than others, and when you add it up, the overall decrease that to 0.84, that's a 16% decrease in mortality, um, if, and it's a 10% reduction for every 10 grams per day increase in dietary fiber. So it's something that we all should do more of. Um, now, <laughs> This is an important aspect because um, uh, the fiber allows you to do carbohydrates in a way that's not as harmful. 
So don't process them. Don't take the husk off the rice. Don't um, uh, get rid of the, the bulky part of, of the bread uh, and try to refine it so that it's just so much, uh, so easy, so much easier to, to eat. Um, the, this particular article uh, was really important because it, it talked uh, about decreasing all-cause mortality uh, and the incidence of heart attack and stroke if you actually have high uh, carbohydrate um, uh, quality by doing a lot of dietary fiber. Thank you.